Hi, my name is Katie Glendenning. I work in the team that manages the Nationwide House Energy Rating Scheme, or NATAS, as I think most of you will know it. I'm going to take you through some recent updates to NATAS and how we are supporting changes in the National Construction Code, the NCC 2022. A little later, I will hand over to my colleague, Dr. Andrew Law, who will discuss the expansion of the scheme in more detail. I'd like to begin with an acknowledgement of country. Our department recognises the first peoples of this nation and their ongoing connection to culture and country. We acknowledge the First Nations peoples as the traditional owners, custodians and law keepers of the world's oldest living culture and pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I thought a good place to begin would be to reflect on the benefits of energy efficiency and why it is so important. As you'll be aware, working in the industry, Australia's energy system is undergoing a fundamental transformation and managing energy demand is a critical part of this change. According to the International Energy Agency, energy efficiency represents more than 40% of the emissions reduction needed by 2040. Poorly designed and constructed homes are wasting energy. We can help avoid this waste by guiding better design and construction. This reduces energy demand now and into the future. Raising energy efficiency minimum standards for new homes and apartments also contributes to lowering household energy bills by creating comfortable homes that use energy efficient appliances and on-site energy generation and that have less need for heating and cooling. An Australian Building Codes Board regulatory impact analysis estimates that every new house built should recoup any upfront costs with lower bills, on average around $180 per year. The ongoing saving will support households into the future for the entire life of the building. The Australian government has committed to reducing Australia's greenhouse gas emissions to 43% below 2005 levels by 2030 and reducing Australia's net greenhouse gas emissions to zero by 2050. To support the smooth transition of Australia's energy sector, the National Energy Transformation Partnership has been formed between the Commonwealth, states and territories. The NADAS and NCC reforms were agreed by energy and building ministers in mid-2022 as part of the trajectory for low energy buildings, a national plan for zero energy and carbon ready buildings. NATAS is supporting industry and homeowners to design and build more energy efficient homes. Moving forward, the National Energy Performance Strategy will provide a long-term framework to guide and lift Commonwealth action to assist with energy affordability reducing pressure on the grid and meeting the government's 2030 and 2050 emission reduction targets. Additionally, through the National Energy Transformation Partnership, the government will work collaboratively with state and territory governments, energy market bodies and others to increase understanding of energy demand and to inform energy planning and investment. The NCC 2022 changes have increased the minimum energy efficiency requirements for the thermal shell from six to seven stars. The whole of home annual energy use budget requirement has also been added. This assesses energy used by major appliances such as heating and cooling systems and water heaters and pool and spire equipment. The NCC 2022 changes will be adopted from the 1st of October 2022 with a 12 month transition period, noting that individual jurisdictions may make modifications to implementation timeframes. This will also be touched on further on in this presentation. My colleague, Dr. Andrew Law, will take you through the whole of home changes in more detail in the second half of this presentation. But now I'm going to spend some time focusing on the updates and improvements to NATA's thermal assessments. Updates to thermal assessments. The climate files that are used to calculate star ratings for NATA's have been updated with more recent and accurate weather data. This is an important improvement to NATAS as the climate interacts with the design features of a building to determine the amount of heating or cooling needed to keep the house comfortable. And the more accurate the climate data, the better the information supplied to inform the building's design features. The star bands, which indicate the amount of energy used with each star rating, have the potential to be impacted by the new climate files. As a result, the star bands have been recalibrated to minimize any impacts. The recalibration ensures that no particular dwelling will be disproportionately impacted by the updated climate files. As a result, the majority of current dwellings will have on average no change to their star rating. 
Individual dwelling designs may show a small increase or decrease, but the level of impact is well within the range of normal that is expected. The NCC standard that sets out the NATA's split heating and cooling load limits has also been updated for NCC 2022. This is being done to provide appropriate load limits for seven star houses. The load limits have been adjusted to reflect the changes to NATA's star bands. NATA's has also made some adjustments to improve awareness and accessibility of the standard for assessors and certifiers at key stages of the building design and approval process. The NATA's software has been modified to look up the relevant load limit in the standard and alert assessors when a design is not meeting the requirements. The NATA certificate has also been modified to show the relevant NCC split load limits next to the predicted heating and cooling loads of the rating. This approach will allow users of the certificate, such as building certifiers, to quickly assess whether the NCC load limits have been met. The ABCB has changed the thermal bridging requirements for residential buildings, as thermal bridging can significantly reduce the effectiveness of insulation if it is not accounted for. Thermal bridging is the movement of heat across an object that is more conductive than the materials around it. This effect is more pronounced with metal frames. Natas has worked with CSIRO to develop a thermal bridging capability that aligns with the NCC 2022 requirements. This includes that thermal bridging will only apply to metal frame constructions. Ratings of timber frame dwellings will be unaffected. Thermal bridging calculations will only apply to repeating metal frame elements, for example, joists and studs, for floors, walls and ceilings. Default values will be used when the precise framing specifications are not provided. It is an NCC requirement that thermally bridged metal frame constructions achieve the same thermal performance as similar timber framed constructions. To offset the negative effects of thermal bridging on the thermal performance in Natas, any other element of the home's design can be improved. Please refer to the Natas website for further information on thermal bridging. This includes a report with details of the thermal bridging research that was undertaken. Natas software is being upgraded to support the new NCC energy efficiency requirements. We are working with commercial software tool providers to have tools updated, accredited and available to industry as quickly as possible. We are hoping to be able to accredit tools by March next year, but this will depend on the commercial tool providers putting in an expression of interest. It is expected that accreditation will take between two to six months once an application is received. Keep an eye on the NATAS newsletter and website for information about tool accreditation. But what's available now? A new version of the NATAS benchmark tool Accurate that includes modifications to support the NCC 2022 changes was released in September this year. It includes updated climate files, heating and cooling load limits, thermal bridging, and the new whole of home rating. In the meantime, to help industry prepare, the NATAS accredited tool providers have released endorsed beta versions for thermal assessments. These are available from their websites, although they do not include thermal bridging. When using a beta tool, you will also need to check that the latest heating and cooling load limits are being applied. If not, the NCC 2022 heating and cooling load limit table is available from the ABCB's website. NATAS has also endorsed the First Rate 5 Whole of Home Pilot Tool to provide an early indication of other NATAS accredited tools that may be available in the future. Endorsed tools demonstrate what is possible for accredited tools by providing an indication of the look, feel and usability. Endorsed tools do not produce a NATAS certificate or Whole of Home rating to demonstrate compliance with the NCC 2022 requirements. Building for seven stars does not have to be costly or complicated. Simple design features and material choices can make a big difference to a home's energy efficiency and its energy rating. Correctly applying the principles of passive solar design will have the largest impact on a rating at the least cost to assist reaching the new seven star requirement. This includes building for the local climate and using sun control mechanisms to provide appropriate shade and solar access as required. This could be, for example, to let in the winter sun and block out the summer sun. Also, correctly orientating the design and the zoning spaces so the main living areas have a northerly orientation will also make a significant difference to a home's thermal performance and its star rating. 
Optimising the size, location, operability and shading of glazing is another important consideration to take into account. This could be to enhance cross ventilation or by design by strategically limiting glazing to the east and west orientations when appropriate. Improving the glazing is also something worth considering. Natas includes both default and custom window options. Generally, choosing default windows will usually result in a lower rating, so we recommend switching to a custom window where all the specifications are known. This allows for greater accuracy. Consideration should also be given to the colour of the roof, window frames and walls, adding internal ceiling fans where appropriate and increasing the R value of wall floor and ceiling insulation can also assist in improving your rating. Additionally, as a result of the restar banding process, it is now overall slightly easier to get to seven stars than it was previously. In the new software, a six star house on average will remain the same with some slight movement occurring up or down within the appropriately defined parameters. And a seven star house will overall perform slightly better by 0.1 to 0.2 of a star. Thank you for your time. I will now pass to my colleague, Dr. Andrew Law, who will walk you through an introduction to the Natas expansion to Whole of Home. Hello, I am Dr. Andrew Law from the Natas team. And in this session, I'll be going over the expansion of Natas to perform whole of home assessments. Ever since the publication of the trajectory for low energy buildings and the National Construction Code scoping study, the Natas team in conjunction with industry has been working on expanding Natas from assessing only the thermal performance of buildings to the whole system of energy use in the home. In a nutshell, we've been working on bringing appliances into Natas. Now, up to this point, Natas has only assessed how much energy was required to keep the home inside the defined comfort bands and did not account for the efficiency or fuel of the appliances that were conditioning the home. With this expansion, we're now able to assess the impact of all those appliance choices. As Natas is the main pathway used for demonstrating compliance with the NCC, the focus has been on aligning with the NCC 2022 scope. This means that we've targeted the same fixed appliances that the code has referenced, covering the heating and cooling, hot water, lighting, pool and spa equipment, and on-site generation. To help Natas meet broader objectives, there are also allowances for cooking and plug loads as part of the assessment. This does align with how the NCC's elemental pathway was developed, and we've worked really closely with the ABCB office and the experts behind the elemental development to make sure that this doesn't make Natas more stringent than other pathways. Natas whole of home assessments will make as much use of existing information as possible, both within the Natas assessment that you already perform with location or climate information or floor area, for example, and appliance rating schemes such as the zoned NG rating label or the gas star rating label. We've been working closely again with our expanded technical advisory committee and other industry experts to determine how best to calculate the performance of the widest array of appliances possible, giving assessors and homeowners as much flexibility as possible to find a solution that suits them. So what actually happens in a whole of home assessment? Well, the thermal assessment uses the Chenneth engine to figure out how much energy is needed to keep the zone within the Natas comfort bands, but is completely agnostic about what appliances you use to achieve that. The whole of home assessment uses the Chenneth simulation as a base, but then applies the appliances that you've specified and calculates how much gas, wood, or electricity is required for each hour across the whole house. The tools account for a wide range of technologies and they do all the heavy lifting on the technical side so that you as assessors don't have to. We also calculate the solar PV generation and battery storage if these are present so that for electricity, we also know how much energy is being imported or exported in each hour. So really, Natas is figuring out what the home energy balance is for each hour of the year. To quickly explain what I mean by energy balance, we have this handy little chart showing a simplified interaction between a house and the grid. So in this first example, there's no on-site energy generation. So all of the energy to run the home is coming from the grid. In this second example, the home has a solar PV system, which is generating energy represented by our yellow lines. Now, when energy is being generated by the solar system, this can be used on site to run the house, which is the green part of our chart. If there's more energy being consumed by the house than is being generated by the solar system, 
then energy is imported from the grid to meet that extra demand, which is shown in red. If there's less energy being used than is being generated, the excess then can be exported, shown in blue. You can see now in that the amount of red in our chart on the right is much smaller than it was without the solar system. This shows that the house has actually purchased less electricity from the grid. In our third example, the home now has a battery system as well. So what batteries are actually doing in practice is taking energy that would have been exported and allowing you to use that on site later. We can see here that the excess solar generated during the day is actually charging the battery instead of being exported. And then as the solar generation tails off in the afternoon and early evening, the energy demand of the home is actually being met by the battery instead of the grid. This minimizes the amount of energy imported and exported and makes the most of the solar PV system. Natas applies the same metric as the NCC, which is energy value. A key part of the energy value metric is the time of use element. This only applies to electricity at the moment and reflects the impact of peak load on the grid. So it does this by applying higher values to energy that is imported during peak times and lower values to energy that's imported at shoulder and then off peak times. Other fuel types don't have the same peak issues as electricity, and so they only get a single factor at this point in time. It doesn't matter so much when you use your gas heater because the gas network tends not to fall over in the same way that the electricity network can. Once we know the total cost or credit for the house in each hour, we then add this up over the whole year and convert it into the whole of home performance rating. With the addition of whole of home, there are now two Natas ratings, the star rating for the thermal shell that you're all used to and the whole of home performance rating. This new rating behaves in the same way as the star rating where high numbers are good and represent homes that have lower energy requirements. The new rating does not replace the old rating, both are still important, you'll see that the new certificate shows both ratings. And while having a good thermal shell will improve the whole of home rating, it doesn't guarantee high ratings. The whole of home rating has been designed using the same ideas as the thermal shell rating. This means that we've targeted specific values that meet NCC minimum standards across all climate zones, and that the rating scales are all relative to their local environment. We know that different climates require different design solutions and that energy prices are different across the country. And this is all reflected in the scales. This sample shows three different climate zones and how the energy values to achieve the ratings of 50 or 60 are actually different. And this is due to the different climate conditions that need to be responded to, as well as the different energy prices in those places. You'll see also that to achieve a rating of 100, the energy value needs to be zero in all locations. For some places, this might be fairly easy, but in others, it could be more challenging. We've also noted here the class one and class two minimum requirements for the NCC, and these are set at 50 and 60 respectively, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. So you've done your thermal assessment and achieved your targets there, but you're not happy with the whole of home results yet. How do you go about improving your whole of home rating? So the most obvious things are using higher efficiency appliances, or adding solar PV if you haven't done so already. Higher efficiency versions of the appliances that have been specified will simply use less energy and improve the rating. Likewise, having solar means that you'll have to import less from the grid and also have credits for exports that help offset the energy use. If those aren't creating the change that you want to see, you can consider switching to a different appliance technology if that's something that's going to work for your client. Or you can think about shifting some of the energy used during those expensive early evening peaks to a cheaper time. So this can be done by facing some of the solar PV panels toward the west, which will allow the system to generate more electricity later in the day, or by adding a battery. Just like in Nada's thermal assessments, there are things that you won't be able to change. This is because there are things that, whilst good for improving energy efficiency, are actually very difficult for a building certifier to check and enforce through their compliance pathway. Part of our role in the NADAS administrator is to make sure that ratings are consistent and to create a fair and level playing field across all of the industry. This brings me to how NATAS fits in with the changes for NCC 2022. Now, these next few slides are a little bit dry, but bear with me because they're really important. 
Nadas is still referenced as a deemed to satisfy pathway as normal, but has also been included as a DTS pathway for the new whole of home performance requirements. You may have noticed that the NCC has updated the clause referencing from previous years. So the references on screen might be a little different to those that you're used to. For class one buildings, the NCC now requires a rating of seven stars to be achieved. Although for some locations, there may be additional credits available to you, but please check if those apply. There are also updated heating and cooling load limits that match the increased star rating. For the new Hall of Home requirements, if you use NADAS, you'll be required to achieve a rating of 60. Class two is a little bit more complex with an individual apartment requiring a thermal star rating of six, but the average across the whole building must be seven stars. Again, there are updated heating and cooling load limits to meet these new requirements. For whole of home, however, every apartment must achieve a rating of 50. There is no building average for whole of home. Every single apartment has to meet the same target. So what do you need to do now? Well, right now, all you need to do is keep an eye on the NADA's website and newsletter. We recommend that you check out any of the beta tools so that you can have a play around with the new climate zones and star bands and see how your current files rate. We are working on training and guidance documents and we'll be bringing those to you as soon as possible so that you're all ready for the end of the transition periods. The website and the newsletter is also the best place to keep up to date with tool accreditation. This is a big change for all of us and it can't be done without the engagement and support of all of you. So thank you very much.